Since I first tried IQNix's F96 keyboard, I've been a fan of their quality. However, I prefer smaller keyboards and at the time they did have a 60% option, but it was quite old and I was hoping they'd come up with an updated version at some point. And they did. This new model now has hot swap switch sockets, a really welcome addition. So let's take a look at this new F60 2020 edition keyboard from IQNix. So first, the box the keyboard came in is really solid. The branding is on point, I received the Coral Team edition of the F60 and it's nice to see that the box is also themed accordingly. In it, the keyboard is sitting under a plastic tray, there is a small user guide, although mostly in Chinese, the English version is available online though. Then a high quality braided USB-C cable with nice metal endings, and finally a 2-in-1 tool that acts both as a keycaps puller and a switch puller. Looking at the keyboard itself, first thing you'll notice is how well built it is. The whole case is made from 5 pieces of thick aluminum, in my case with a nice blue paint finish. The quality is outstanding, and the paint is perfectly even, with the model printed at the back. The design looks very nice with hex screws holding the case on each side at an angle. Overall, it's pretty much perfect in my opinion, if you like that minimal style. It weighs in at around 1.8 pounds or 800 grams, so quite lightweight for an aluminum case. At the back there is a USB-C port, then under the keyboard comes feed that are pre-installed, although you can remove them and extra rubber dots are included, and that would result in a flat keyboard, not necessarily the most comfortable for typing. To remove the feet, you'd have to remove the plate and PCB. Looking at the layout now, it's 100% NC standard, being a regular 60% keyboard. You don't get dedicated arrow keys, but they can be accessed through function and WASD or OKL column. The latter being not super common. It's sort of the equivalent of WASD, but for the right hand. The only thing I'm not a fan of is that they swap the right alt key with the function key. I'm using this right alt key quite often with the language preset of my keyboard, and it's a bit confusing at first. Replacing keycaps would be fairly easy given that the layout is standard, but the pre-installed keycaps are really nice. First, they match the whole theme with the case very nicely. The legends are dye sublimated, and one thing I found interesting is that the colored keys are actually made from white plastic, and then only the top coat is colored. Based on what the web page says, the whole key is dye sublimated in those cases, so in the end, it should still be durable. It really feels like the color is part of the material and not a top coat. They feature an OEM profile and are made from PBT, so overall, quite nice keycaps were being included with the keyboard, and they match the case very well. My unit came with cherry brown switches. There are more options, especially if you go with the non-LED version, but they're all from cherry. Apart from reds, blues and browns, there's an option for pinks and silvers. Even if the selection is limited, the good thing about this keyboard is that it features hot swap switch sockets. So I would recommend going with the cheapest option and then replacing the switches with what you prefer. Unfortunately, the PCB only supports 3-pin switches, so if you do have 5-pin switches, you'll have to cut the extra plastic pins for them to fit. In terms of stabilizers, this keyboard uses Coster stabilizers, which is pretty rare. They feel alright and are factory lubed, but they are much harder to reinstall when replacing keycaps compared to cherry style stabs. Although they are factory lubed, there is still a bit of rattle on stabilized keys, although it could be worse too. I'm not sure if the lubing job could be better, as I don't know how to lube coster stabs. One other very interesting aspect with this keyboard is that it has sound dampening material under the PCB, but also between the plate and PCB. It seems like some synthetic foam material. Quite interesting choice and the fact that some of the material wraps around every switch probably helps a lot to dampen the sound, which you'll hear in a second with the sound test. For an extra $20, the F60 will come with RGB LEDs, although I think my unit is defective as the second row from the top doesn't seem to be able to display green light. When I pick the all green option, the row doesn't light up, and any color that's not a mix of red or blue is not right. 
Hopefully it's specific to my unit and not something too common, but I thought it was worth mentioning. If I was to buy one for myself, I'd probably go with the non-LED version anyway to save a bit. The keycaps are not shine through and I don't think it looks as good on a keyboard that has a specific theme like this one. And if it's half broken, then yeah, definitely not paying 20 bucks for it. On board, there are a bunch of animations and you can loop through them with function plus enter. And then you can iterate over all the available colors with function plus pipe. Finally, the brightness can be adjusted with function plus X and C. In theory, you'll be able to control the lights in the future with a software. However, said software is not ready yet. I was hoping the software would be ready in time for this review, but it's still being built. While allowing to configure the LEDs, it would also allow key remapping, something I wish I could use to change the current function and write alt layout. I really hope it'll come out. The F96 I reviewed a while back did have a software and it worked decently, so hopefully it'll be the same for the F60 2020. Keep in mind that if you buy it, the software might not be out yet and I don't know exactly how it'll work and what it will allow or if it will work at all, so let's hope it does. In conclusion, I like a lot of things about this keyboard. The build quality is definitely the biggest plus. The paint job on the aluminum case is flawless, the overall design looks nice, and the theme with the keycaps looks very good. I also like that it features hot swap switch sockets and that it came with sound dampening foam pre-installed as well as factory loop stabilizers. In terms of downsides, I wish the stabs were cherry style instead of the coster type. They're simply easier to play with. I also wish the PCB allowed for 5-pin switches, and I hope that the dead green LEDs on my unit is a very rare thing, and I finally hope that the software will come out soon and allow for a lot of customizability. At $129 without LEDs and with basic cherry switches, I think this is a decent value for the money, as long as the software comes out eventually. If the software is not up to expectations, then I would recommend a GK61X with a case upgrade and a nice set of custom keycaps instead for a better overall build. So that wraps it up for today. As always, I'll have an affiliate link to this keyboard down below. Feel free to use it if you're interested and want to help the channel at the same time. So thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already as I'll see you in a future video. Bye.